Okay, so Cipriano will talk about his passion, which is continuous integration. Yeah. Okay, um, so. Is this now? Yeah. Well, basically, you, you, you just had a, a bit of a snapshot, right? Disclaimer uh, I will refer to Windows Team Services as Windows Studio Online because Microsoft is having this identity crisis right now, so they don't know if they're Windows Online, Windows Team Services, so they're switching them and stuff. What I'm trying to say here is that automation plus Windows Team Services plus Octopus equals love, right? This is the theme of the presentation and the article. I'm Philippe Ostrian, I'm technically using Interactive. And this is related to continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So what is continuous delivery? This is from Martin Fowler's blog, right? It's not something I wrote. It's a software development discipline where you build software in such a way that the software can be released to production at any given time, right? In contrast to continuous deployments, which is every change goes to the pipeline and automatically gets into production, resulting in many deployments each day. We don't really want that in every single project, right? But we're going to try to achieve this with the tool set that I'm going to present. So what's continuous delivery, right? You need, you need a specific set of skills in order to achieve this. In order to be achievable. You need to have continuous integration. I'm assuming all of you are aware with that. You need to have your source code in, in a common place to which each developer contributes. You need to have a, a deploy life cycle, meaning that you take your code and you put it through different uh, gateways in order to validate it automatically and push it to the final result of production. You need to prioritize the code deployability over new features. So if you have a bug in the code, and it's not deployable, you don't start to implement the features about that bug because that's gonna, uh, that's referred in, in our branch, in our working branch, as a technical debt. And you wanna avoid that. Push button deployments. Now, this is a dream that I think I share with everyone in this room. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're on the business side, like Christie's, <laughs> or you're a developer, you still want to have a deployment in production and push of a button. DevOps collaboration, this is something that is getting traction uh, right now. Um, we're trying to build cross-functional teams. We're trying to have developers that can do a DevOps job. DevOps means that you, you are capable to set your own infrastructure and you're capable of maintaining it without calling someone from an external team. And then we have a high level of automation. You, you can see the, the two asterisks there. You don't really want to automate everything. That, that's plain stupid. <laughs> if you automate everything, you're just going to end up with, with the higher technical debt that, that you wish for, right? So let's move to the tool stack. So basically, for automation, we use Selenium, we use SpecFlow, and we use Danuni. Don't ask me why the code is legacy. We just try to enhance it, right? So Selenium is used for uh, uh, for doing end-to-end uh, -end testing from a front-end level to the lower system, right? So you don't, you don't really care what's underneath, you just consume a website. Spectral uh, is that cute little language called Kaltenberg, right? Which is used for uh, writing um, the code in a BDD manner, behavior driven development. And unit, and unit is just a framework like any others to run your um, automated tests. We went for annually because it's free, basically, and you don't really need a, a, a premium Visual Studio subscription to run coverage for, for anything. Uh, the, the Visual Studio Online, or Visual Studio <coughs> Services, part of the tool stack. We're using Gamma's Guild, obviously. This is a .NET code. Uh, we're using PowerShell, because it's a, it's a very powerful scripting language. And we're using Chocolate Bee. That's a, a cute name, tool, right? It, it's chop. Why not use it? And the glue of this system is, is Octopus. That's a bit of a lie, because the driver is actually Visual Studio. Octopus is just keeping everything together. We're using Octopus because we have a lot of secret uh, keys 
that are linked directly to our infrastructure. And we are kind of paranoid to keep that on Microsoft side of things, even though our infrastructure is in Azure, so our optical service is in Azure, but still, yeah, we're paranoid. But that's a good thing. And yeah, don't keep all your eggs in the same uh, basket, right? So we came up with development, with the deployment pipeline based on the tools that we had, and it all came as a challenge. Uh, we were like, okay, our code is not tested. We're not uh, confident to deliver it daily in production. So we need to do something about it. And we decided to challenge ourselves to write 15 uh, automated tests per team per sprint. Very bad idea. We ended up having a thousand tests that took around 18 hours to run. <laughs> something like that, right? And we were using, back then, we were using Octopus to run the tests. So every single deploy would take 18 hours to be validated properly if we didn't pick the skip button, of course. We used to do that. So we decided, okay, this is not a good approach. We have all these tests. We have all this effort involved. And we're, we're doing nothing with it. So the, the first pipeline was simple. You have the code. You have the repository. You build your code with Amazon. Then you push the, the artifact to, to Octopus, which doubles as an artifact repository for us. And then you run your tests and everything. And you push everything to production, skipping the tests, of course, because they take it hours. And then you have an email notification, right? We refactored that. It wasn't good enough because the server was, the Octopus server was, was a very expensive resource, in, not in terms of money, in terms of resource time. Everyone uses the Octopus server, so you really need to be, to use, use it in, in very short cycles, right? So we decided to, to do this thing here. So what we're doing is that the artifact is put to Octopus, then when you actually have to run a test, you just uh, trigger with an API call a build in Visual Team Services, and then you run your tests on on Microsoft build agents. That's cheaper because they're hosted in the Azure infrastructure. It's easier to provide, and uh, it's actually a lot faster. And you have literally unlimited resources there. So, okay, we created multiple agents. We create multiple batches. We didn't really solve the problem with the long running tests that was solved later with Selenium Grid and stuff. But it was getting somewhere, right? So how, how did we do this? This is how our uh, Visual Studio Team Services build definition for the test is doing. Because Octopus was very powerful. It has all these templates I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, to run various tasks on nodes or servers. So we had to create that from scratch in Visual Studio Team Services, or VSO. <coughs> and we were basically building the solution, uh, the test solution. Then we were installing Chocolatey because you, you didn't really uh, know on which agent you actually end up. So it was a black box. You had to pre-set up. If it was already installed, it, it didn't install. Then you had to run a PowerShell to install Firefox, we were running our Selenium scripts on Firefox engine. You had to install any unit in case you didn't have it. And then run a PowerShell script. Uh, you will find that in the article I didn't bother to actually write a script here, uh, which is actually running all the tests from your DLLs and everything. And then it's publishing, it's providing an XML that's getting published to the uh, publishing tool that we use to the online provides. It looks like this at the end. And another nice thing that our uh, our curating did was to actually take screenshots at each error that occurred and push them in the article repository. So you would have a more immersive experience when trying to debug something. And then send an email notification again through a partial script. Partial is actually it's pretty powerful, it's in the name. This is to cover the article. The conclusion is that the system is far from being perfect. We are currently at the third iteration, I think. 
that project is, is no longer, uh, it, it's obsolete, it's no longer here. But we had the opportunity to start new projects with a more clear view on how we should approach the end-to-end -end testing. As a lesson learned, don't challenge yourself to write tests. Write tests when it's necessary. 900 tests are definitely going to contain some duplicates, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could reduce that to 20. <laughs> Start with the cost reduction idea in mind. I know you're not directly paying for the resources you're using, but it's like, uh, why would you use post-its when you have a board in a website? If you're not dependent on that physical thing, right? It's, it's the same. Why would you use $10,000 worth of resources when you can do it with $500, right? So think cost efficient and try to optimize your system using the tools that are out there in the market. And by doing multiple iterations on the same cycle, don't give up. Don't give up, don't, don't make it look, I, I don't wanna make it look easy or something. It, 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 it took us a year to get to something good or close to good, right? Now, I'm proud to say that on our project, we're actually doing live deploys uh, more than once a day, and it's with confidence, right? Thanks to, to one of these five guys. So try, iterate, learn from your mistakes. Don't automate everything. I, I think that's the key thing here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 